So the only thing that's really been in the news cycle lately has been the January 6th committee hearings. And I'm kind of frustrated with this because the fact that this is what we're talking about, to me, feels like an enormous distraction. Now, why is that? that I think this, why, why would I say that this is a distraction? Isn't it serious? Isn't it, you know, people storming the Capitol and we need to know all about that? Well, let's see. First things first, we haven't learned anything at all from these hearings. Everything that's come out has been stuff that pretty much everybody knew other than just the, you know, the one guy giving a tour, everything else. So look, Trump didn't listen to people who said, uh, the election is over. Well, we knew that. We knew that that's the whole point, right? Wasn't the point that, that Trump thought that the election was rigged against him? We knew that that was what happened. And we knew that his advisors might have said, according to the pollsters, according to the news, according to all of this, you've lost. We knew that. And Trump said, nah. And that was why we had things happen as they did, right? We've had AOC come out and start crying again about January 6th, saying she's reliving her trauma and all that stuff. She wasn't even there. And everyone knows this. Every She's been shown to be a freaking liar about this over and over and over again. And yet here we are again with AOC living her trauma all over again in her little Instagram live post where she's like cried about it. And so, I mean, come on. Like, it's, it's just theater. It is literally political theater. They've revisited this whole, the whole insurrection thing. They've talked about cops being killed when we know... For a freaking fact, no cops were killed. None. Not in not in any of the things that happened on that day. The the insurrection did not kill any cops. Two cops died, had nothing to do with it. Fact check me all you like, I'm right about this. They've also abandoned the insurrection term, right? They've replaced it with storming the Capitol and siege of the Capitol. Why have they done that? Well, because it it's a better headline. That's literally why. Nothing, no new events transpired to make us think that a different name would be more appropriate. No, nothing, nothing happened. Nothing more has been uncovered. Look, it's, they're just reframing it to screen for attention. But why? Well, here's what's going on in the background that they don't want you to pay attention to. First of all, uh, the GOP is kind of just killing off all the, uh, the old guard people. The MAGA Republicans are winning. The people that Trump endorses are winning. Liz Cheney, the chair or the head or whatever it is of the the, the January 6th committee, she's going to lose by a landslide. Just watch. Just watch. She's going to lose, yeah, as Trump would say, bigly. She's going to lose bigly. Oh, and, uh, you know, other than just our midterms, you know, what else What else is happening around the world that they don't want you to look at? Oh, monkeypox. Monkey, what's going on with monkeypox? Well, we've learned that they're going to rename it because monkeypox, according to them, is racist. I think only a racist would think that monkeypox is racist because when I think monkeypox, I'm thinking of like a gibbon or like a little spider monkey. I'm not thinking about a type of person. And the people that are pushing to rename it are the ones who hear monkeypox and they think, ooh. Sounds like a black person. They sound black. Like, who, who, the, who the hell thinks that? Nobody thinks that. Why are we renaming this? If it comes from monkeys and it's a type of pox, it can be monkey pox, just like chicken pox. Although, I don't think you usually get chicken pox from chickens, but that's beside the point. We can call it monkey pox. I, I don't get it. They're also trying to reframe the way that it's spread. So the vast majority of people who've gotten monkey pox lately have been gay and bisexual men. Men who have sex with other men. Now, this is not a judgment on them or anything, but apparently a, this version of monkeypox can be uh, sexually transmitted and it's often transmitted by sores in that genital region. Um, and therefore, it's the men who have sex with other men that this is primarily affecting. Now, uh, according to some people, I have to say, because YouTube doesn't want you to say that's the primary mode of uh passing between people what's the word i'm like infection that's not the primary mode of infection and i'm not saying that it is i'm just saying that a lot of people who have gotten monkeypox most of the people who have gotten monkeypox here lately in this outbreak have been gay and bisexual men now to me it just sounds like they're trying to keep these people from getting the help they need by saying it's stigmatizing against them um 
if you're part of a population, if I was part of a population that was more at risk for something like this, I'd want to know. I'd want you to tell me. I'd want to be thinking I should take extra precautions because I don't want this to happen to me, right? Isn't that the right way to think about something like this? But no, it's got to be identity politics. It just has to be. How could it not? Oh, and let's talk about food processing plants. 97 food processing plants have been destroyed. You know what the fact checks say? Oh, fires are normal. Fires are regular. Not fires that totally destroy the plants. Uh, not fires like this. Not this many fires. This is not normal. This is, th this is way above the average. Look, over 200 million people in the third world are going to starve to death because of our lockdowns. Our lockdowns. People are going to starve all over the world. It's happening now. Go look at what's happening in Sri Lanka. So when our food processing plants start getting destroyed at this rate, that that shortage that's going to happen is going to be exacerbated to the nth degree. This is not something to be taken lightly. Oh, and, you know, we haven't even seen, you know, we've seen groceries go up, right? Groceries have gotten more expensive. General Mills raised everything by, what, 15% this year. Um, our meat has gotten ridiculously more expensive. I think the cost of living overall has gone up by... I think it's like 8% right now. Like it's like $3,000 for the average household. That's how much extra they're going to pay in cost of living. But we haven't even seen the effects of the food shortage yet. All of these costs that we've been incurring, those are coming from the cost of fuel being driven up. And so since transporting things in trucks and boats is going to take more fuel with the price of fuel going up, we're having to pay for that. That's all we've seen so far. We're going to see the food shortages hit and then things are going to get way more expensive. And then what's even greater than that, we're going to see the results of the fertilizer shortage that's been going on because of the conflict in Russia. Uh, here in the West, we're having a shortage in uh, of fertilizer, which means our crops are going to have issues. They're going to have trouble planting. We're going to have lesser yields and so on and so on and so on. So that's just going to compound the problem and the food crisis will just get worse and people are going to start struggling people are going to get violent and people in the third world i don't think it's going to kill people here in the u.s but in the third world people are going to die because of this we're going to keep our food for ourselves oh right and here's another thing uh we're going to they're doing this because they don't want you to think about ukraine anymore either the only things you're hearing from ukraine by the way are ukraine victories and calls from ukraine for more help do you know what's really happening in ukraine ukraine is getting killed russia is winning the proxy war that the West has put on against Russia is failing, and they don't want you to hear about that. The West just sacrificed a ton of people in Ukraine under the guise of, we support Ukraine, we want them to fight, we're going to send them all these things, knowing full well what was about to happen. Russia is grinding them down, Russia's going to win. That's, that's just the way it is. Now, I'm not saying that Russia should win, I'm not saying Russia is right, I'm just saying objectively, Russia's winning this war. It was just a show of sympathy from the West to put Ukraine onto, yeah, into this proxy war and manipulate all of us. How many of you have driven through your neighborhood and seen Ukraine flags everywhere? Down the street from me, there's this, well, let's see, it was probably a good two miles. There's a neighborhood where I guess the neighborhood all got together and decided every single tree along the edge of the road is going to have a Ukraine flag nailed to it. Like, it does nothing. Let, let's just get that clear. Putting up your little Ukraine flag doesn't do anything except send money to, you know, whatever organization decided that they're going to profit off of this war. And the billions and billions and billions of dollars that we've been sending for weapons is just poured down the drain. That money could have been used to help uh, address the issues that were the domestic issues that we're having, the baby formula shortage, uh, the issues at the border with three million illegal immigrants getting ready to storm across. It could have been used to help address the the gas prices that we've got. Uh, you know, we're, we're about to hit five dollars here where I live in Kansas City. It's crazy. It's absolutely crazy the way that this is going. And 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 the January sixth committee hearing is nothing but a a last ditch attempt to play on the hatred of Donald Trump to mask the failures of the Biden administration. That's what it is. It is a distraction. This nothing is going to come of it at all. 
there's going to be a bunch of people that say some things and they're going to be like, oh, Trump this and Trump that. But you know what's going to happen? All the people that like Trump are still going to like Trump. And all the people that are going to vote for Trump are going to vote for Trump. All of the people that supported him before and then half of the ones that didn't are going to support him again. Trump will run in 2024 and Trump will win in 2024. And I think that right about now, the Democrats are starting to realize that with the outcomes of these primary elections. It's absolutely brutal for them out there. The Trump Republicans are murdering the old guard Republicans. It's it's not even close. There was one, uh, I don't remember which place, it was, maybe it was South Carolina. Um, one of the guys won uh, 51% of the vote. Uh, the Trump guy won 51% of the vote. Fry was his last name. And then Rice, the incumbent who, was, uh, who had joined the group to impeach Trump, uh, he had like 25% of the vote. I mean, he it was two times... Two times. You don't see margins like that, especially for an incumbent. Trump is the Republican Party right now, whether you like him or not. And Trump will run and Trump will win. And it's as simple as that. The economy, it, you know what they always say, it's the economy, stupid. Well, it is the goddamn economy. People are sick and tired of paying. as much. My, my, my groceries now cost me a time and a half what they did two years ago. It's crazy. I buy pretty much the same thing. I'm in grad school. I'm on a budget. I buy the same things every single week. And it's a time and a half is expensive now. We're sick of it. We're tired of it. This January 6th distraction is just stupid. Uh, be prepared. Keep your eyes open. And I'll see you next time.